I'm cutting rhizome material for propagation off of this plant here. Um, the rhizome is really just the underground stem tissue of the rubber cane plant. And it has all the potential uh, to create a new plant here. You see a dormant node right here. Then you see it, the potential for rooting right here in that little dot. <clears throat> and then we've got you know an active node right here where there's new growth coming out. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and trim the new growth because it's gonna have a higher water demand initially. So I'm taking off the tender new growth and then I'll start cutting sections of rising that are probably five to seven nodes in length. I'm soaking them while I'm working so they don't dry out. All right, and now should we go ahead and get some soil? Yeah. And then we'll show the sticking process. There's all kinds of things you can do to make this more efficient. Like I mentioned, as I get into this, I'm going to have to orient each rhizome, and, and that takes a little bit of good news too to know which side is up. So I'm not, I'm not framing the soil into the containers. I leave it loose so that I can easily get the rhizomes in there. <clears throat> and it leaves pore space for the rhizomes to become established. So I just gently fill the cells. Same principle for any size container. So if I was doing gallon size with bigger rhizomes, I would go ahead and lay them all out. And usually do staggered like that so I don't lose soil, fill them loosely before sticking the rhizomes. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to take some rhizomes. I'm orienting them vertically, so either by the leaf sheets or the nodes. Everything should be pointing up, and then I'm just sticking them one per cell. You can do two per cell. That's kind of an insurance policy. The fifth one, I'm going to go ahead and split it's a little llama. What is uh, your success rate? If you get everything right as far as timing of year and keeping everything damp, and I mean, you could have really 80% or more. more. Yeah. But one little mistake, letting your stuff dry out, letting it get too hot. Cane isn't very forgiving if it experiences, especially in the propagation phase, if, it, if something goes wrong, it's hard to pull it out of it. Whereas like growing perennials and things, you can let them dry down to where they look terrible and then water them and bring it back to life. Cane doesn't really work that way. So it sort of becomes an active relationship between the person growing the cane and the cane itself, right? Yeah, and, and you want to you want to be quick. You don't you want you basically do kind of want to baby the material. You want to be quick. So like as soon as I'm done with a tray sticking it this way, I'm not going to let it sit and risk drying out. I would take it and immediately soak it up and water it. And um, you you might want to start it out in a part shade situation if it's sunny and warm. How long until you uh, rooting takes place? Do you think? Well, if I stuck these in December, they probably still wouldn't root out until late February, March. So we're kind of threading the needle right now on timing. But I like going ahead and getting everything set and giving it time to kind of like almost cook, if you will, you know. But this should this should work just fine if moisture is managed on them. One good thing about doing one per cell is then you can really if you come back and you see what has died and what has lived, then you can narrow down your target on what kind of rhizome material you're looking for. You know, like this one looks a little of a diminutive to me, so I might stick it with a part or any of the I like doing twos, threes, fours. It depends on how much material you have. You know, if you have a ton of it, why not stick two per cell? I mean, it's less of an effect on glossies. 
in doing this have you noticed variation in success across different populations? Absolutely. Yeah. Any trends that you've noticed or patterns that you have in the big show? I like to take propagation material off of really vigorous, young looking uh, roof cane breaks versus say finding, you know, you find a lot of populations out in the woods that look a little stagnant, maybe they're in the shade. Um, just because it's cane doesn't mean it's going to be good for propagation. You want to find a really vigorous, youthful stand to take rising material from. That's all of them. That's all we have right there. So this tray is complete and we want to soak it really heavily and keep it damp for, uh, I mean, several weeks, you know, until you start to see signs of the top growth. And even then you want to, you want to keep it generally damp without letting it dry down all the way until until it, I mean, you can kind of tell when they're coming along, they, they look like they're growing. And then you give them an opportunity to dry down more frequently. So, and I would say later this summer or early fall, you should be able to pop these smaller units up into gallons. And then the following winter or spring, you might be having a situation like this out of that gallon where you can then take rhizome cuttings off that.